Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. In all of my LED projects, I always include a logic level shifter on the controller board. I've had a lot of people in the comments tell me that a logic level shifter is not needed, even going as far as to quote me uh, voltages from supposed spec sheets. So today I'm going to set out to figure out, do you really need that logic level shifter? And if not, why do I include it in all my projects? So hang around. Okay, so before we get into a real-world test, let's take a look at what the manufacturer's spec sheets tell us for both the WS2812 pixel strips and for the ESP chip itself. So first, let's start with the WS2812B, which are our LED pixels. Again, this is the official World Semi uh, spec sheet, and there's a lot of information in here on, on dimensions, but what we're really interested in starts with these electrical characteristics. Basically, it says that the voltage operating range for these pixels are four and a half to five and a half volts. And we all know these are five volt pixel strips, so that makes sense. But let's come down here and take a look at the input voltage level for our data in. It is saying the minimum value for our data signal in is 0.7 times the operating voltage. So five volt strip, 70% of that is a minimum data signal of 3.5 volts. Even if we use the low end of the 4.5 on that times the 0.7, it gives us an absolute minimum of 3.15 volts. Now, will it work below that amount? Maybe, but that's what the manufacturer's spec sheet says. Next, let's take a real quick look at the ESP8266 just to make sure that uh, we're being complete. And this is the official spec sheet from Expressive. I'm going to slide all the way down to the, again, the electrical characteristics here on page 24. And just to take a look at that, again, our working voltage, again, for our I.O. is 2.5 to 3.6 with a typical of 3.3. Now, yes, the D1 Mini and the Node MCUs run off of 5 volts, but there's voltage converter that actually steps that down for the actual chip itself. What we really want to know is our typical output from our GPIO pins is going to be 3.3 volts. That already puts us below that minimum of 3.5 that was on the WS2812. But how does that work out in real life? So this is the logic level shifter. Basically all it does is it takes our 3.3 volt signal coming off of our, our D1 Mini or our controller board and just boosts that signal or shifts it up to 5 volts to run out to our LED strip. As you can see they are very inexpensive. Here is a 10 pack for $9, so actually less than a dollar a piece. But the question is, is it needed? Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken just a D1 Mini, running 5 volts into that, 5 volts into our LED strip, about 35 pixels here, but we're really just interested in the signal getting to the first pixel. And I'm coming straight out of the D1 with the signal, currently about 12 inches uh, between the uh, D1 Mini and the first pixel over here. And uh, we'll right now everything looks good on solid. We'll try a couple of quick effects, and I know it's kind of hard to see the, the LEDs, but we're looking for any kind of disruption in, in that signal. As I go through here again at about 12 inches, it seems as if everything is currently fine, and there isn't any problem with any of the effects and doesn't seem to be a signal problem. So at this point, we're going to keep adding lengths to the signal wire to see if we de develop a problem and at about what length that happens. Okay, at this point I've added uh, about another 24 inches, so now we're up to about 3 feet of the distance from the D1 Mini to our actual first pickle. pixel. Not a pickle, it's a pixel. So let's hit the power again. And again, there's solid. Everything looks good at this point. I'm not seeing any flickering or any problems with signal loss. So let's again try these same effects. I'm going to use the same effects every time, uh, just so we're consistent in our comparison. Again, everything looks good for all of these effects, same way as it did before. Doesn't seem to be any kind of signal problem at this point at about, uh, about three feet of distance. So let's add a little bit more distance to see what happens. Okay, I've added another three feet. So now we are about six feet from our D1 Mini to our first pixel strip. Let's try turning on the power. Whoa, right off the get-go, uh, we've got a problem. That should be... Um, again, solid, and the lights are extremely dim. They're the wrong color. They should be red instead of 
blue. Let's try a couple of our effects. Well, that's supposed to be our candy cane effect. That is not working. That is half working, not like it should. So there we go. We, we've definitely developed a problem now somewhere between three feet and six feet. We've developed a problem with our signal, and we're now we're not getting enough voltage into this first pixel. So I'm going to stick at the six feet, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the logic level shifter in, leave the length at six feet, and see if the logic level shifter fixes this problem. Okay, so what I've done here now is I've just added the logic level shifter into here. So now we're going to come, our signal is going to come out, pass through our logic level shifter, and be shifted up to five volts. Everything else is the same. We're still at six foot length between, uh, we're now from the logic level shifter to the first pixel. So let's hit our power. Right off the get-go, solid looks good. Let's try our effects. Okay, that has definitely fixed our problem. All of our effects are now back to normal. So by using the logic level shifter, at least when we were at somewhere between three feet and six feet and the signal uh, was causing problems, that has now been fixed by adding the logic level shifter. So just for fun, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add another three feet to this and make it nine feet and make sure that our logic level shifter uh, is still providing the benefit of a good clean signal. Okay, just for the heck of it, I just went ahead and rounded this all the way up to 10 feet. So now we have 10 feet uh, of wiring between our logic level shifter and our very first pixel. So let's see what happens at 10 feet. Okay, we look good on solid. Our candy cane, all of our effects still look good even at 10 feet of length between that. So one final thing, I'm just going to leave this at 10 feet, take the logic level shifter back out, and see where we are with just the D1 mini and the 3.3 volt signal. Okay, so here we are back to just the signal out from the D1 mini. 10 feet run uh, between the D1 mini and the first pixel, and since we already had problems at 6 feet, I expect all kind of problems here, but let's turn on the power. And again, there we go. That That is just on solid. It once again, is the wrong color. Um, there's supposed to be the candy cane effect, and again, I'm getting next to nothing there. Um, we are getting a signal there, but it's, again, not anywhere near the effect it's supposed to be. So, um, yeah, it's just flickering all over the place with these different effects. And you, even back to going back to solid, the lights are extremely dim. You can barely see them. So the logic level shifter definitely makes a, a difference here. And so one final thing before it comes up in the comments, yes, you can use a single pixel as a logic level shifter. As soon as the signal is received by the first pixel, it uses the five volts and automatically boosts the signal uh, to the pixels down the road. So yes, you could use a logic level, or a, sorry, a single pixel here, and WLED has the option to skip this pixel so it won't light up. So you can solder your signal and five volts into this, again, as long as it's close to the controller, to me, for the the amount of uh, dollar that it costs for the logic level shifter, I still think it's a better solution than trying to to solder the wires onto this logic or onto this pixel. But yes, you can use a single pixel as a logic level shifter. So, in conclusion, do you really need that logic level shifter? Well, if you're able to keep your controller really close to the start of your LED strip, you might not need it. Personally, I would recommend that you use it anyway and spend the extra dollar. You're going to spend a lot of time and effort on your LED project, and the last thing you need is a problem with the signal, especially if you need to move your controller some distance away from the start of that strip. And there can also be variations from manufacturer to manufacturer in both the LEDs and the ESP board that you're going to use. And what might work in one instance, say a two-foot length, might have problems in another install with the exact same length. So better safe than sorry, I would recommend installing the logic level shifter on all your LED projects. Your mileage may vary, and it's ultimately your decision, but that would be my recommendation. So that's going to do it for this quick video. If you found anything helpful or useful, please hit that like button, lest both me and YouTube know more people ought to see this video. And if you like my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new videos. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.